that is coming out uh, that uh, the deputy president wants to create some form of uh, a division with the Mount Kenya voting base. Mm -hmm. And so we saw that the president has been very keen on the votes from Western and Nyanza and also the coast region. And that is why you've seen he's brought in Joe on board, but also has decided to retain Samuel Mvuria, yeah, yeah Mvuria, you know, who's the former CS for mine yes. and blue economy, because he wants the cost votes. He knows that if he gets the cost votes, he why awarded, he rewarded Musalem Davadi and Retangula, and now he's brought in Opara, and those are the, what we call the kingpins of the western region. And then he's also dangled a few carrots for the people of, of Luonyanza, mm -hmm. in addition to, you see, Raymond Omolo is there. So actually, this is a political, this is a political decision, because the president wants to change his attention from Mount Kenya towards, you know, uh, you know, building a rapport with Western and Nyanza, in the hope that that would be able to seem carry the day in 2027. The reason I'm, I'm asking this because looking at the the nominees, now the president to some extent he already had the Western Kenya in the basket. Not really, not really. To some extent, yes. But by bringing in Wycliffe or Paranya, now having Musalia Mudabadi, having Moses Wetangula and uh, having now right. weekly Kofaranya or Paranya to some extent now he is able to control the whole of Western Kenya. And when we move to uh to Nyanza now, already already we have the two. That is in case the nominees are successful. Now we have the body and we also have uh, Wanai and of course Raymond Omolo. The low people now feel like now we are part of this. Yeah, part of so to some extent with the Baba living and he's having uh, his foot in Nyanza, that is in Luo Nyanza, he'll be able to grab a chunk in case is. Baba does not go. Now looking at this analysis now, moving back to um, to cost where already you so rooting himself in this is to me i see this as a result of the rift that had been witnessed uh, previously between him and the deputy president now if this game go like this what is there for gachabla i think as as, as we all seen uh, mm -hmm. the deputy president uh, 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 honorable gachagua has been in a lot of unease and we saw that when uh, the president gave a statement and then he came out uh, dismissing uh, you know the claims and, and also just just, mm -hmm. just just trying to complicate things a bit by calling out Nudin Haji as uh, the, you know the director for this for, 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 for failing to uh, you know to detect this revolution prior. Mm -hmm. I think what is left for Gachagua is he has to put his house together. Uh, the first thing that he'll have to do following this appointment is have to get his own party because, you know, uh, there was no party for him. So the first thing he'll have to do is get a party and register a party or become a party leader. And after that, he's going to try and mobilize his what one you know, to his side to just try and put pressure on William Ruto. But the end game of, of this entire thing is that Ruto is a political schema and I think he's two steps ahead of Kachagwa and this might spell the end of Kachagwa's political career. Yeah. Mm, you had mentioned earlier uh, about the ODM. Just before, before the list of nomination was announced by the president we had seen John Mbadi supporting the president so much and we had seen the ODM secretary that was Edwin Sifuna saying that what happens we do not take part and any member of ODM 
who has been appointed by the president should go knowing that ODM is not in support of that. We also seen just yesterday in the parliament of Kaluma saying that they are eagerly waiting for those whom Baba gave to the president. What is happening in ODM? They are double speaking. And not really. Uh -huh. it's, it's politics. Uh -huh. Politics is, is a game, it's chess. If you look at what has been happening, especially with the ODM party, they've never had a clear stand. Today you have Baba saying that, you know, we need dialogue. The following day he's saying that, you know what, I'm tired of this form of intimidation, even if it is about this AU chair and stuff, I, I better leave it. So politics is this chance, and I would tell you that before that list came out, this was well choreographed. You know, the other day Obasanji was in Kenya, I think that is the, the, the time that, uh, you know, the, the people, uh, the president and uh, I believe the party leader, my party leader Raila was on the table trying to see on what share of the government he could take. But then there is something called political communication. You have a large majority of those people who are going out on the roads, who are also, you know, in the position. And you find yourself in a tough situation whereby you've been called to help stabilize the government so that you don't lose the nation into anarchy. But then you also get pressure from a generation and loyal voters. So I think what they did is they played it smart. The Secretary General, the likes of Babu Wino and the likes of Orengwa. So LDM appears as if it is divided, but it is not. Mm -hmm. So it is just the political chess. You say that you stand with the Gen Zs, but then you have these few people who say we are bold enough, we want to stabilize this country, we are taking these positions. So literally ODM is not divided because if ODM was divided, whatever is happening, these guys ought to have known. People would have resigned, either the Secretary General would have resigned, you know, in protest, or you have had a faction release a press statement saying that. You know what, now that these people, our minority leader, our leader in the National Assembly is getting into government, our party chairman is bad, is getting into parliament, then we, this is, we do not associate. But you've not seen press conferences, you've not seen bold statements. What you've actually seen is a lot of silence and a lot of celebration on this other side. So I believe that in the, in the, in the few days to come, uh, people in ODM will rally against these nominees and they'll support this government. We, we just have to agree that in Azimio, ODM was very much vocal in opposing the government, especially through Opio Wandai. Now it's going to form part of the government. What is going to be left for the opposition? Actually, uh, just like I said when we were starting this program, what you're witnessing is a government of national unity. It's a handshake 2.0, except that Baba is not, has not been put at the center of it. That is why when all this thing was happening, Baba was in Dubai. But uh, let us take a keen interest. I want to bring a perspective that perhaps we have not taken a yeah. keen look into. Mm -hmm. Look at the position that was offered to Odia. And I want us to stress on two things. One is... Uh, Honorable John Badi being given the CS for treasury, mm -hmm. and we know that most Kenyans are dis dissatisfied with the way the economy is being run. I agree, Mbadi is a, is a serious intellectual on matters of economics and accounts. But you see what this economy, our economy is in crisis, and not even John Badi is going to uh, solve all the problems that exist. He might solve some, but eventually he might not solve them at all and perhaps there's a possibility that with the, the rate of inflation going high with our economic growth uh, you know being stagnant there is more pressure so the next time you'll see people on the road people will be protesting against against body why because he is he's been put in a trick in the most dangerous cs position he'll be the one to authorize new taxes and so I'm trying to see a situation whereby in 2027, laws will be blaming their own son for hiking taxes so that they meet 
you know the budget uh, requirements of the fiscal year you also come to the issue of oil where we have honorable opio on that yes when we see the price of petrol and kerosene rising <laughs> we'll be seeing a low in charge so if we are to see this thing in long term ruto was smart enough to give our people the most dangerous positions that would turn the people against them so that is in the long run and i can tell you that things are not going to get easier things are going to get tougher so as far as opposition is concerned very little uh, perhaps we'll see kalonzo uh, come together with mata karua and jeremiah kion uh, and uh, maybe if things work out they might join gachagua but for now that's not so for now we'll see the opposition in terms of kalonzo mata karua jeremiah kion but ODM is not going to be in the position they are already in government. Now, having brought the perspective of looking at the long run of, of the key positions that the Luo have been nominated. Now, uh, having also listened to Professor Ayora and other political analysts saying that Raila should trade carefully. Very. Because this was, this is a way of him being smeared it's a trap and this is a way of his end game that is he started well he has been moving in in, uh, in the right direction taken a good course but right now is ending badly is this likely what we expect to see come 2027 uh, trust me because right now if you do a polling we have this new generation of young people who do not recognize what trailer did in mm -hmm. 1992 in the 1990s these are people who saw their parents struggle but things were cheaper they come into adulthood and realize that how tough this life is it is not as they were seeing it they do not recognize the struggles of the past you tell them about independence it doesn't make sense there are people who are interested in what happens now okay and that is going to be the largest voting block 2027 you know there was this meme that was going around that while they were to a young you know those who used to burn schools yes. back in the days they were used to a particular type of life a particular freedom and that is why they were able able to organize so successfully that not even driver himself could contain them so looking at this the political future of our party is in great peril because one if we never learned from our previous handshake the one reason why ODM lost the presidency was because they carried the baggage of Uru's government and it is something that even the people in Kenya Kwanza were still using against Raila that you know these people the handshake took all the money from the treasury and left us with nothing yeah, it is yeah. something that sell that 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 sold so well in 2022 that it denied a vote but then coming into 2027 the fact that our party has joined hands with the kenya kwanza government it is not going to be easier the young people who voiced this struggle have seen that as a betrayal and they'll punish ODM more than any other party come 2027 because right now they're not going the people they trusted to help fight for it are the people who went to bed with the same government that oppressed them and left them to die. So in 2027, I think Raila is going to have its toughest moment. Uh, somebody, just today, after the nomination of the other cabinet, I, I was with the, a political analyst, and this is what he said, that he does not see a problem when Raila comes and gives Ruto a support in order to bring the government to stand. Uh, this is what he's saying. When people talk of betrayal, in 2007, Raila had a party. And it was Raila against Kibaki. And those who were for Raila were Mata Karwa, Kalonzo Musioka, Eugene Omalwa, who formed the Azimio 
as at the moment. At that time, they left Raila and they were joined to Kibaki. So now that Raila has left the Azimio containing the Sensen people and has moved to join hands with the, the president William Ruto, they is saying that to him it is okay. Now, what is left for Azimio? I will take you back. Mm -hmm. If you look at the president, uh, I'm a public uh, policy a guy and uh, a little bit of uh, a geopolitical expert. The reason why Trump lost his second start as the president was because of Gen Z's. And I'm telling you, it is for that very reason that I think my party should trade carefully. Politics and economy go hand in hand. You know, for those people who understand the political politics and economy, mm -hmm. would always tell you why right now we're having problem in Bangladesh. Why so many presidents have been sent home, including in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. It was because of the economy. And when we talk about what happened in 202, we had serious guys. Kibaki had some of the most competent you know, ministers in his government. And we realized that when he realized at some point that some of these guys were not really focused on delivering for the Kenyans, he dissolved cabinet. You know that? Mm -hmm. He never recycled anyone. Instead, he brought a new face, a team that helped the Kenyan economy had its fastest economic growth ever. We had you know, better network coverage, the shelling was stronger, you know, people enjoyed economic surplus to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. That is not the same case now, right now. And that is why, even though we might just say simply because, simply because we have Baba. Baba does not control half of Kenya, neither does Ruto. There is this new generation of voters that is challenging every norm in the political system that we knew from 2010. And that is why they were able to occupy parliament. And that is why they were able to do the impossible. That is why they forced the president to actually dissolve cabinet. And those people will not forget whatever happened today. They will never forget betrayal. And that is why I think, even though we do not have a viable opponent to take on William Ruto, I would tell you that people backlash come in different forms. You might find yourself for the first time in Kenya, you'll have, you'll have more independent MCAs and MPs in parliament. You might realize that for the first time, the government of the day might not have enough MPs to control parliament. They'll have to work with sets of coalition like it's being done in France and other countries because people would go for merit and not party. Because the party in itself betrayed those people who believed in them. My dear viewers, let me sample your comments. Then we take the last question from uh, that is to Mr. Otieno. We have your viewers. Uh, thank you so much for keeping tuned with us. We have Ward Sona is saying, very humble young speaker. I'm very much excited. Thank you so much. We have, uh, I'm going to take questions last. I'm going to take questions last. We have Ward Sona also saying, thanks so much, Mr. Speaker, and welcome again at Navin John. Yes, I'm glad that is Stalin Tom. I'm glad to hear from Navin. He speaks for many youths indeed. Now, I'm having a question from Legrand. Was the cabinet dissolved or dismissed? I think uh, both, both terms uh, can work. Mm -hmm. yeah, it depends with the root or to English. So you can always dismiss a cabinet, mm -hmm. but then you can always dissolve. Uh, a cabinet, you know, because it's 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 an institution, and when you dissolve it, means you render it operationless. It doesn't exist anymore. Now, Navin, yes. Let's take this scenario. The president 
I believe at some point he had learned these mistakes. I believe at some point. Then he comes back, brings the new cabinet in place, although some are just reshuffled. Then, by good luck, things work out for him. Things turn out to what Kenyans never expected, that is for the good of Kenyans. Do you think there will be still the slogan, Ruto must go? I think the slogan, Ruto must go, is something that is going to stay alive until 2027. Mm -hmm. And uh, simply because the president did a tactical mistake by bringing uh, back the new cabinet secretary. Actually, the reason why we saw that demos uh -huh. was simply because he brought in you know, the people who, you know, Kenyans are saying, these people are not competent. You know, how I wish the president was brilliant enough to bring him in a new face like Kibaki did. Otherwise, these same people that we keep on seeing here, you see the like of Murkome, and perhaps they would be told that, you know, you know, you know, you need to turn down, buy a castle watch, you know, don't buy an expensive watch, don't, you know, get opulence and arrogance please turn it down but you see the real issue here is the competence uh -huh. is the real competence of these people when you dismiss a cabinet simply because even you as the president you said on national tv they do not live up to the standard that i know a lot in your department than you that pointed out to competence you don't recycle competence. When you recycle competence, you sign your own certificate of failure. And that is what the president did. We can have people like Mbadi, but Mbadi is one man. He cannot run the entire economy you know, of this nation. You can bring in Opio and I, hoping that he's going to lower the price of, 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 of diesel in, 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 in kerosene. But you see, the political economy will not allow them to do that because one, we've scared away investors who's going to come to invest in Kenya at a time when even the ambassador himself flew and left the country, the US ambassador flew. What are you going to do at a time when we have been, uh, you know, hiking taxes and driving businesses and investors out of this country? What is going to improve in a situation whereby the government cannot create you know, not enough employment for its people instead it's exporting you know youth to you know people who've done degrees and masters to go to saudi arabia and be dishwashers and households that is not a country that is going to prosper what kenyans needed was a fresh start give us a fresh cabinet give us people who are competent not people like murkomen murkomen is a failure he failed the people of this nation you see uh, you, you 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 want to talk um, about you know bringing somebody like uh, you, you know wh wh what is Dwale going to do in, in the ministry of environment and forest honestly speaking what does he know about climate change action you know or his job is good to know, you know, we are targeting, you know, planting 10 million trees a year. Is Dwale really in his position? What is his expertise? What is he going to do as the CS? What is, what is, what is Tuya going to do in the Ministry of Defense? Does she know what an M16 is? Does she know the military doctrine? Has she ever served? You want to tell me that there were no able exodus who understood the real issues at the Department of Defense that could propel this country forward? You want to tell me that we never had a real expert on issues of agriculture to bring on board? You want to tell me that the Ministry of Education belonged to Kisi County and that is why you had to get a running mate of the former CS to come on board. Those are puppets. Those are people who are not coming out here to help Kenyans. Those are people who are there to serve their own interest and also to get rewarded for their political loyalty to the president. This, mark my words, because I now be coming back to this studio, uh -huh. this is the worst cabinet that has ever been. 
I want to ask you the last question. That is, is there hope left for President Ruto come 2027? Don't answer that. Let me give you just a brief of uh, some of the nominees that the president has put high money to gather information on round five. Now, we have Dr. Deborah Mulonga Barasa, that is health department, is practicing senior medical doctor with more than 15 years experience, having specialized in international medical and infectious disease. Dr. Barasa has worked in health institutions across national referral, private and community-based organizations, including the renowned CHAMF, as well as World Health Organization. She also, she also worked with an international medical physician at the Mata Hospital. And uh, just giving you the brief on uh, uh, some of them, we have among her key roles in achievement in the field of co-leading programs addressing outbreak prone infectious infections such as respiratory infection that is COVID-19. Again, we also see that the new CHS she she nominee acquired Bachelor of Medical, Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery between 2021 to 2006 at the University of Nairobi and later Master of International Medical Medicine at the same institution. Now, we have Julius Migos Ogemba, that is education, is a senior advocate at Migos Ogemba, Waodo advocate, boasting of over 25 years in practice. Before nominee, before his nomination, he served as the chairperson of the Kenya Electricity Generating Company that is Kenyan following his nominee last year. Ogemba is an alumnus of the University of Nairobi where he attained Bachelor of Laws. And uh, moving to the other, that is, uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Andrew Muhia Karanja, agricultural sales nominee. Uh, is agricultural economist at the World Bank with more than 36 years experience in public sector both locally and internationally. Uh -huh. We also have uh, the fourth one is uh, Eric Muraiti. We had given that, had given uh, her profile and uh, let me give you I think the last one that I had here is uh, Margaret Nyambura that is information communication and digital economy the newly yes margaret is a known expert in internet governance she has immense experience in internet infrastructure artificial information artificial intelligence that is machine learning cyber security and all that that is what i can give you about what we've discovered from some of the nominees that we have there are more that you can get and find out is there hope left for the president to come 2027 in I, your opinion i think as, as the youth of this nation we we will never forget the moment that we had huh? i want to be loud kiddo. we we came close to tearing the, the system that has been in place for the longest time so that we could build a new political system for Kenya that could serve the interest of the people that could factor in the youth who are the largest population and also you know the most unemployed there is there is no hope for Kenya under this administration yesterday there was this guy who who really trended on and he said that you know, he has degrees, but there's no job for him, so he has to do some, you know, s small, menial jobs that even his wife hates him because of what he's doing. He went to college, he had a big dream, he knew that after college there is hope. You want to tell me that the youths who are going to graduate or who started graduating in 2022 2026 do you think they have hope no how many of them have been employed 
the early 1%? Does the government have a plan for them? Zero plan, except that even if you're not employed, you must pay for shift. If you're not employed, you must get some tax. You must, I don't know, file for tax. I don't know what you're filing for. And that even the smallest business that you open today would be heavily taxed. I know of stories of many young people who started business after campus because they never had hope of getting employed. Right now they've closed because of the tough economic times. All those people will come and vote in 2027. And this is my parting shot. Before you do the parting shot, answer for me this one question. Then you can do the parting shot for the interest of time. Do you think in your opinion, that the parliament is going to play its role when it comes to the nominated CS and say for sure this is what the country wanted and this is what we are giving. Well, par parliament is, is, is no longer independent, we all know that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been captured and we know by the two main houses, by the two major parties that is KK and ODM and since they have their nominees, you know, before it comes out there, everything that has been done in the background, just like two million was issued for people to pass. So definitely all these nominees are going to pass, a majority of them, at least 90%, I believe most of them are going to pass because the whips will have to do their job, the majority whip and the minority whip will have to rally their troops behind behind uh, this team. I know they're going to they're going to get back to work and we know a majority especially those who have been recycled are not going to be subject to to you know to an interview or an evaluation process uh, you know based on uh, you know the, the communication that I had from the speaker yeah. Honorable Wetangula. so this few clich of people it's going to be a backroom deal and they're going to pass so definitely I believe that uh, before the end of August, we are going to have all the 21 new CSS in office, you know, with their with their flags, you know, with, with big vehicles and, and, and you know, you know, with everything else that we as the Kenyan people hated. This is not a government that is going to listen. It has failed to listen to the people, and uh, with the coalition, you know, there is now strength, and you know, we in parliament, and so Kenyans are going to continue to suffer. So this is my 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 parting shot. Yeah. Uh, dear fellow Kenyans, uh, I'm speaking to you today as one of the fellows. We have been on the road and I believe that after this exercise, that marks the end of most of our demos. But I want you not to give up. I want you not to lose hope. As I told you, is that we tried bringing change on the streets, never came. But we still have a voice and that is the fault. The real change is going to be on the ballot. In 2027 so this is what I want you to do I'm urging you today get out there get IDs get a voting card register as voters and mercy and start organizing for action so that in 2027 we tear this old political system apart let us vote youth down from down all the way up so that we can see and bring hope to a new Kenya. That is all I'm asking of you. I continue. Thank you so much, Mr. Navin Otiel, for sparing your time coming to be with us and uh, for giving our viewers insight. My dear viewers, thank you so much you. for staying tuned with us at PTV Kenya. We bless God because of you. We have to come to an end till next time a time like this that is next week on wednesday keep following us on facebook on twitter on tiktok and on youtube have a lovely evening and a good night thank you